all right game two we're on data c um it's a big map data c it's big isn't it it's big uh this is a best of three and gray raven is currently 1-0 in the lead my control key has just come off um my keyboard and that is bothering me sorry um okay <laughs> i know yeah um yeah is this game going to be different from the first um both players just super cagey in that last game i'm not really sure what was going on i'm just going to speed up the first couple of minutes here um yeah neither player really doing any sort of harassment uh gray raven happy to just wait till she had 200 supply of hydra and pretty much just a clicked across the map and with five base economy at that point was able to just continue to reinforce so um crimson playing very casually indeed defensively had the siege tanks up and did to be fair trade very efficiently with the initial wave of army um but it's not enough you know once a zerg is on five bases once you if you've let their economy run away like that um the first wave is not where the fight ends they're going to be coming again and they can just remax so so much faster than a terran <clears throat> so as the terran um you know you've got to do something to slow the zerg down uh, you've got to be harassing them you've got to force uh some of that larva to be spent on units when that doesn't want to be and you've got to force some of the drones even to be spent so you know things like liberator harass um things like drops can force a couple of uh, spore crawlers can force spine crawlers anything that you can do like that all of it is slowing down the zerg machine um and that's kind of you have to do it uh, otherwise you know um, if you're not going to push early against the Zerg and try and end the game off two bases, uh, which that can be a really effective strat too. I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, if you're not going to do that, you definitely can't just sit back and wait because the Zerg will just come and beat you down. Um, they'll grind you down. They'll trade armies with you, which is what we saw happen. Both armies were pretty much decimated, but the Zerg is able to just remax so quickly. So uh, one of the options um, that Terran has against the Zerg, uh, you know, a Zerg will get three bases up pretty sharpish. Um, as the Terran, when you're thinking about getting your third up, the Zerg will be thinking about getting their fourth up. And therein is an opportunity because you can get across the map. And if this is gonna be the fourth, you can get into a sieged up position. And, you know, you don't have to push into the main base all you need to do is deny mining at the fourth and get a cancel on it. Um, your third finishes up, the Zerg doesn't have a fourth and you're level on bases with them then. And that is never good for the Zerg. Uh, if you're level on bases with the Zerg, um, you're, you're beating them is the kind of short version. The Zerg is, the Zerg should always be one base ahead of the Terran um, to kind of be level. Uh, that's just the way it is, isn't it? Zerg stuff, you know, is squishy and expendable. Um, so Zerg needs to consume, consume minerals, turn it into units, um, have those units destroyed, turn it into more units. That's, that's how the, that's how it's supposed to go. Um, so army wise, uh, extra MS is well ahead and he's going to come in with a handful of Marines. Uh, I don't know about focusing down the hatch. Is she going to get it? Not if you then change your mind. I don't know that was yeah there were two things let look back look there were two options here uh the choice to be made having decided to go for the hatch I think you then had to commit I would have preferred to run through the mineral line and just kill all of these I think that's the better choice um than focus in the hatch because focus in the hatch has the issue that you know the zerg's going to come and defend that that's what's going to happen um and when they come and defend if you're still focusing the hatch you're not fighting their units and you're going to lose all your units do you really want to swap the majority of this army for the hatchery but i think once you've decided to go for the hatch at this point the answer has to be yes you you then have to finish it look you know you've you've done a large like what does a hatchery start on 1500 this one's down to to third health i think at that point i'd have said yeah okay let, let's do it alternatively you could have fought the roaches there aren't that many i mean you've got a reasonable force here and uh with the cyclone 
I'd have been inclined to fight the roaches. I mean, there are already two marauders in the mix, but still, still. Combat shield was done, stim was done, a quick stim. You could have punched through those roaches pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, that indecision, uh, I think is gonna be costly because now Grey Raven, the, you know, the fourth is coming down. And this is the timing I was talking about. The third is up, so, you know, Siege tank tucked in here, another one here, uh, maybe one uh, somewhere at the back here. And you can just come forward and be ever so obnoxious and just deny mine in here. And when the Zerg tries to come and defend, you've got so much siege uh, tank coverage, it's gonna be really, really expensive for them. And that's what you want. You want it to be expensive. You wanna force them to make more units than they want to and have to trade those units out um, against an entrenched position. What you don't wanna do is come forward and fight on creep. I don't like this angle at all. Yeah, run. Mm, that's a bit pricey. That is pricey, but you've got stim. Just stim and get out of there. Um, yeah. yeah, stim not being used for whatever reason. Um, anyway, uh, I guess, you know, no medevacs as yet, and, and that was actually a big error in the previous game. There was like one medevac, you know, uh, with an army that was, I can't remember what the supply was, but you were well up toward the 100 supply of army, um, but only one medevac, that's that's not gonna cut it. Uh, you know, so if you are gonna play a bio style with a lot of Marines, um, that's fine, that can work. Um, but bear this in mind, if that's the style you're gonna go for as Terran, one of the key advantages to Marines is they're cheap, they don't cost any gas, so they're pretty expendable. They are fast. Stim Marines are rapid, and when you load them into Medivacs, they are, it is the most mobile army in the game. Like, it just is. Um, you know, you can just load them up into Medivacs, fly them into Abyss, and that's what you need to be doing um, if you're gonna play a bio style. You need to be active with them. You need to abuse the fact that they are fast. Your opponent's army here, you attack in here, you stim through, you kill some workers. When the army comes, you load into the medevacs and you boost the medevacs into here and you drop. You kill some workers, the army comes, you load up, you boost into here, you drop, you kill a bit. You, that's, that is the power of bio. That is where it absolutely excels. It can be, um, it can get to different areas of the map quicker than anything else can. Um, if you don't, fancy that if you think that you know the challenge of microing that uh, the demands on your APM are a little bit too much uh, don't play bio <laughs> simple as that um, you know because Terran mech is a much slower pace of game you get a lot of siege tanks up you get some Thors you get some Hellbats and you can creep forward you can push you can grind you can defend uh, you can play quite a defensive style and you, you can punch through your opponent pretty slowly um, Marines not great really for the frontal engage uh, because you know assuming your opponent knows that you're building Marines they're gonna have a pretty good counter to them and Marines uh, will fall quickly to stuff that does splash damage and such. Mech on the other hand you know your opponent counters mech it's still you've still got to kill it and it's hard to kill um, which gives you it's slow to die it gives you time to respond to it so um, you know so playing a bio style definitely requires faster play, it requires uh, sort of higher APM, requires you to be doing the micro, uh, to be doing the um, clickety click, you know what I mean? That's what the pros call it, isn't it? Doing a bit of clickety click, you know? That's, I'm pretty sure that's what Ranger does, isn't it? Does the clickety click all day long. Anyway, um, so Grey Raven, you know, I wonder will Crimson recognize this? Because in the last game, the first sign that Grey Raven was going to push in was that she sent the occasional lone roach in to kind of test the waters. And that's exactly what we've seen here. A roach came in and died, a roach came in this way and died. So it looks like Grey Raven is setting up for the big attack. Army wise, she does have a lead, but there, look how many siege tanks this is. With these sieged up in the right locations, are they gonna siege up? Are they? Are they? Are they? Are they? Ay, ay, ay. Um, that is a lot of siege tank. And okay, the arc for Grey Raven is good. Um, much, much better than the Marine arc. But my goodness, that's a lot of siege tanks. It's a pity there's one in this medevac um, that isn't on the ground firing. <laughs> Did, I, I was pretty sure there had been more. Um, so again, this feels like a replay of game one. 
Um, the entire Hydra army is gone, but so is the Terran army. And when we look at the army supply, bear in mind your army supply includes stuff in production. There are 51 Hydras in production about to pop. You know what I mean? The Terran simply cannot resupply that quickly. And now the army supply is 120 to 40. Absolutely textbook. Um, you max it out your trade armies and the second wave is what comes in and kills. Now, uh, Crimson Tide, don't let this burn down. Please, you know, do do repair that. I mean, seriously. No. Okay, is repairing it. Good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Grey Ribbon is waiting for at this point. Um, you know, researching kind of plus three armor, I suppose that's worth waiting for. Um, but it is about to finish, you know, that'll be done by the time you're across the map. You don't want to wait and give your opponent time to remax. Uh, you want to get up in their grill, you know, pretty quickly. We're on one, two, three, four, five bases for the Zerg. The income is very, very good. We've got an enormous bank. We've got enough money in the bank to remax instantly. So you make sure all your queens have injected before you go into battle so that you've got spare larva. Um, I think Ray Raven was actually just waiting for the 200 supply mark. I'm not sure she needed to. There are far fewer siege tanks this time and you'd have to say there's no way this is a hold. Now, I'm not sure if I like the pure Hydra remax. I think I'd have liked some Roach Ravager in the mix. Um, BCs against Hydras just aren't going to work. Um, so, oh, that's, that's actually not a bad shot, I suppose. But I don't think, uh, I don't think Crimson has enough to hold here. That, oh, what she will have if Grey Raven just parks on the ramp like this. You know, most of these Hydras are not shooting. She just needs to move this up the ramp. You need to right click this up the ramp and get them all shooting. Um, once all the Hydras are shooting, those tanks are going to melt in short order. There are BCs going into town at home, and Grey Raven's in the weird position that she can't really, oh, she has got a bunch of, these are presumably Hydras. The Corruptors about to pop out. Once these Corruptors pop, uh, they should be able to see this off, but she's sending the Hydras home. I'm not sure about that. I think, I think the Corruptors should be enough. You know, you've got all the money in the world. If the first wave of Corruptors isn't enough, the second wave will be. Um, yeah, the Hydras don't need to come home. The corruptors had this, um, so they, yeah, a bit of a bit of a bit of a dodgy decision that one. Um, sending the entire army home for just four BCs, um, you know, arguably you had corruptors on the way, you could have won the best trade anyway. You know, uh, you could have just continued to a click through your opponent's base. Um, but back she comes. Um, the you know the economy for crimson is decimated. There, we're mining here. We're mining here, nowhere else really. Um, so a lot of these racks are essentially idle. There are no Marines in production, although there's plenty of money in the bank. So not really sure why not. Maybe Crimson is just kind of, I don't know. Um, the siege tanks are gonna siege up in this kind of slightly weird location. Uh, but I wouldn't fancy coming up this ramp into four siege tanks. This is why it would just be so, so good to have some Roach Ravager. They'll take the hits. They'll run up this ramp. They'll give you the sight. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, that's that. Grey Ribbon takes it to GG.